Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video. First of all, thank you to everyone who supported my six month sober video. The comments were unbelievable and incredibly touching, so thank you so much for that. I reached another milestone recently, but this one was a little bit different. <laughs> Those of you who follow the channel, you will know I have been away on holiday, but this holiday was my first ever one being sober. In this video, I wanted to update you on the process I went through while being on holiday. I also just wanted to talk to you openly and honestly about how I felt throughout the entire holiday. And on top of that, I'm gonna give you some memories that I made and perhaps how they might have been different if I was still drinking. And if any of you feel the same way or have similar experiences to alcohol that I had, maybe this video can help, fingers crossed. So, as a family, we went down to Weymouth, which is a beautiful seaside town in Dorset. I went with my partner, mum and dad, sister and brother-in-law, and my nephew and niece. We picked probably the best week of the year to go. We somehow timed it with a heat wave and probably just about the only time the UK has had any sun this summer. This is what our summer has looked like over here in the UK. Speaking of the sun, it meant on the first day we went down there, the pubs were absolutely overflowing. It was perfect weather for it. Everyone was out having a good time and having a drink by the sea. There were definitely some struggles this holiday and definitely times where I was craving alcohol, but at this point I didn't have any cravings at all. I was more than happy just walking past these people. I didn't feel like I needed to partake and I definitely didn't feel like I needed alcohol to enhance the experience I was having. I was more than happy just walking down the front enjoying the scenery. As a family, we stopped along the harbour and did some crabbing. After that, we literally had the <laughs> best fish and chips I've ever had in my life. I think the place was called Bennett's. It was honestly next level, this fish and chips, all right? I'm talking award winning. We queued for an hour just so we could take it back to the house and enjoy it. If you take this experience of queuing for the fish and chips and having it back at home, it would have been completely different if I was still drinking and let me tell you why. First of all, I would not be in that queue. I would be incredibly hot and bothered and irritable. The chances are I would have had a little pint along the harbour, really got a taste for it and just wanted to carry on drinking. There's no way I would have wanted to have stopped, queued up and got some food. I would have done it, of course I would have done it. I would have done whatever my family wanted me to do. But if I was drinking, I would be in such a bad mood that we had stopped. Why am I having to stop drinking? I don't want to, it's not fair. I wanna carry on relaxing and drinking. Why do we have to eat right now? And the chances are, this would have created a bad atmosphere. My family would have been able to tell I'm in a mood and potentially there would have been an argument. Can you hear that plane? It is so noisy. On top of that, if I had a stomach full of booze, then I just wouldn't have appreciated the food as much as I did that night. I would have wanted a really small amount because there's no way I would have wanted to have got rid of that drunk feeling. I wouldn't want the food to sober me up. So I would have a very little amount and not appreciate it as much as I did that evening. So the chances are I'd probably end the night feeling grumpy, irritated, bloated, and once a few hours had gone by, I'd probably end up being hungry too. Instead of that scenario, I loved the fish and chips. I'm probably gonna remember it for the rest of my life. It was that good. I even got a round of applause from my girlfriend and my brother-in-law for finishing my plate because honestly, guys, I stacked it up big time. Not only that, but I woke up the next day feeling fresh as hell. Hell isn't fresh, is it? Um, I woke up feeling fresh as anything. <laughs> Me and Eve even went for a dreamy run along the seafront, which just would not have happened if I had been drinking. As you can imagine, it was such a relief to more or less wake up anxiety free and just feel like myself. I wasn't controlled by the booze, I wasn't irritable, I wasn't hot and bothered, and with it being so hot on holiday, this is gonna sound a bit weird, but I could just sweat a normal amount. When I've been drinking, I sweat an ungodly amount. It's horrible. I sweat so much and <laughs> I get embarrassed that I'm sweating so much. So if people are looking at me, I think they're looking at me thinking, Jesus, he's a sweaty lad. 
and then that makes me embarrassed and that makes me sweat more but <laughs> it sounds crazy, I know. But I woke up and I was just sweating like a normal human. It wasn't accelerated by the alcohol, which was great for me. Obviously, I've spoken about a couple of positives there when it comes to not drinking on holiday, but there are plenty of negatives too. So let's touch on them a little bit. These are just as important, if not more important to talk about because they put everything into perspective and make the highs feel even better once you've achieved what you wanted to. There were 100% moments where I thought how lovely it would be to have a cold pint from the tap. You know, just fresh alcohol out of the barrel. There were even times where I thought, what if I just go down to the pub by myself? Like I could sneakily get a little drink in here and no one would ever know. But then like, how would I be able to live with that? I'd just be living this lie. You'd say to yourself, one year sober. Oh no, not really because I gave in back then. It doesn't really count anymore you'd just feel awful and you'd just be lying to everyone. With all of that being said, I don't make life easy for myself because I love pub culture. I love being sat in an old historic pub, people watching, looking at the old beams, the wonky walls. You can feel the energy in these places. How many characters have been in and out of these doors? I just love them so much. I love being sat in a pub. I don't know, I just feel at home in them. And I made that very clear to my family. I wanted to let them know pubs are absolutely okay. Please don't stop them on my behalf. But the truth is when you're sat in these pubs and you're not drinking, it's hard not to feel like an idiot. I always sit there and I just feel like a loser. I, just, I don't know what it is. It's almost like lad points. I almost want to whisper to the barmaid or the barman and say, alcohol free beer please or can I get a J2O please and then <laughs> just hope they think it's for the kids or something like I just feel really embarrassed going in and not drinking a pint like a nice manly pint <laughs> sometimes I do find it hard and I'm just sat there thinking like why can't I be normal why can't I just sit with my family or a friend and just have one beer to take the edge off like I feel like such an alien being sat there with like a J2O or a water or a lemonade, even an alcohol-free beer. Like I feel a little bit better with an alcohol-free beer. You kind of feel like you fit in, but I have to do that because I can't just go in and have one beer. It's always gonna lead to more. It's always gonna mean I'm gonna go home and try and drink more. And if I'm in a scenario where I can't drink more and the, the evening has to end and I have to just have one, then I'm gonna be miserable and I'm gonna be really grumpy. So the only choice I have right now at this point in my life is to just sort of sit there feeling <laughs> a little bit like a loser with a, you know, a Coke or a soft drink or whatever it might happen to be. Just to give you a scenario in case that didn't make sense, let's say I'm just sat in the pub with my dad and my brother-in-law and we're, we're, we're all having a drink, you know, we're having two or three pints. Then we have to go back to the holiday house and the kids are there and we're gonna settle down to eat. I don't want to do that. Like it makes me miserable doing that if I've started to drink because I want to carry on drinking. I go into like a party mode and if you put a lid on that, that's when I start to feel crap and resentful and Ugh. <laughs> I, I can't explain it. But honestly guys, if my biggest issue with this whole sobriety thing is the fact that I don't feel cool, the fact I can't sit in a pub and feel cool because I'm not there with an alcoholic drink, I really think I'm doing well. Like, <laughs> if that's my biggest worry, when you think about everything people go through, if my biggest worry is not feeling cool when I'm sat in a pub, if I don't seem like one of the lads or feel like one of the lads, then geez, I think I'm doing okay, aren't I? So I really need to just <laughs> shut the hell up. Getting back to the holiday now, and I had such an amazing time. We had shopping trips, we had beach days where we went in the sea, we went on a boat around the harbour, we saw fireworks on the beach, it was incredible. And I didn't need alcohol to enhance any of these experiences. In fact, if you just take some of them in isolation, like the boat for example, we had to queue for a really long time in the sun. And I know for a fact, if I had been drinking the night before, there is no way I would have had the patience. I would have been so irritable and so angry that it took as long as it did. But I was so relaxed and chilled out. On top of that, 
I would have been probably in quite a depressive state. If you've seen my previous video, you know what alcohol used to do to my mind. I really feel like it created a chemical imbalance. And I would have been on that boat and I would have had some horrific thoughts coming into my head about either the boat crashing, me having to save, you know, my dad's life or look after the uh, my nephew and niece in the water. There would have just been some really horrible things coming into my head and none of that happened. <laughs> Obviously the boat didn't crash, I don't mean that, but <laughs> I mean none of it happened as in none of those thoughts even entered my head. I just enjoyed the experience and I've got a core memory there that I will remember for the rest of my life. And the whole holiday was just littered with amazing core memories like that, from being in the sea with my girlfriend, holding her in my arms and just looking out at the view, to just eating a lovely breakfast in the morning, as ridiculous as that sounds. I say that because each morning I would have a large breakfast. I'd really go to town. Each <laughs> each morning my family would be like, no need to ask what Ezra's having. It would <laughs> just be the, the large breakfast on the menu. And I don't take little things like that for granted anymore or big breakfasts like that for granted anymore because back in the day, if I'd been drinking the night before, I wouldn't have had the appetite for it. I would have felt so bloated and full from the beer the night before that I just wouldn't want the food or I'd simply just be too hungover and feel too sick to appreciate food like that. And speaking of breakfasts, as ridiculous as this is, one of my favourite memories of the entire holiday was at breakfast. We were sat opposite a toy shop and without me knowing, I'm eating my breakfast, my nephew's already finished, he's gone into the shop opposite with my sister, his mum, and he's come out and he's bought us matching key rings. <laughs> he's got himself a Grogu key ring and he's got me a Mandalorian key ring and he has never done anything for that, like that for me before, getting a little bit teary even thinking about it. Um, and I could just appreciate it. He came over with a little clear plastic bag, it had the gift in and I just felt so grateful. Like I couldn't believe he spent some of his pocket money on me. And I know if I had been drinking the night before, there is absolutely no way I would have appreciated that as much as I did. I would have hated the attention. I would have hated that all the eyes were on me. I would have just wanted like the ground to swallow me up and that moment to like be over and out of the way so like the attention could be elsewhere and people aren't looking at me like sweating and eating breakfast as I feel like ashamed and hung over from the beer I drank the night before but that didn't happen like I just appreciated it so much and yeah just I'm never gonna forget it it's another core memory that I could actually feel and appreciate and sit with those emotions and it was just beautiful it was a beautiful moment that I could just sit and experience not only that but it meant I could give that little guy my nephew the reaction that he deserves for doing something so lovely like that like he deserves to see me be grateful and thankful for him to do something like that for me. Not to be like, I'll oh, just bat it away as quickly as possible. I'll, I'll thank you, cheers, and then get back to eating. I could actually be myself and appreciate what he did for me in that moment. And he deserves that, he deserves that so much. I think that's my biggest takeaway from this. It's the beautiful moments that I was now able to experience and I gave myself the best possible chance in enjoying every single moment. And don't get me wrong, there were still times where I felt tired, anxious and perhaps I was sat there being a little bit quiet and I hope my family didn't worry but there was just some times, you know, where I'd just be questioning myself, thinking, am I doing the right thing? Am I any fun anymore? Is it, you know, the right thing for me to completely stop drinking? Should I try having one drink and being sociable with them? So there were still some internal battles happening, but I was definitely more present than I've ever been. And a lot of those silent battles that I used to have in my own head were gone. I felt so much lighter and so free and just liberated from the, like, the battles I used to have in my head, they were they were more or less gone. I wasn't looking around anymore thinking, come on, drink up everyone, I want another one. I wasn't like <laughs> looking at someone's drink while they're talking to me thinking, oh, please drink that quickly so we can get another one before we have to go home. None of those battles happened anymore. I could just sit, relax, feel myself and just try and contribute in conversations as much as I possibly could. 
I don't like giving advice on this topic and I'm no expert, I'm not a professional and to be honest, alcohol and our experiences with alcohol vary so much between each person. How alcohol makes me feel could be completely different to how it makes you feel. But what I will say is, if you're struggling and you're really, really having these internal battles where you think, ah, oh, shall I just break the rule tonight? Shall I have a drink? Shall I, you know, join in with everyone else just so I can feel like normal again? Just remember why you're doing it. Think about the negatives. Think about how bad those negatives are and why you had to stop drinking. And just give yourself the best possible chance in waking up the next day and just feeling like yourself and giving yourself the best po possible chance, blah, 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 giving yourself the best possible chance in attacking the next day as the best version of yourself. You owe yourself that and you owe your loved ones that and I think that's just really important to remember. I hope this video wasn't preachy, that is the last thing I want. You know me, I am not an anti-drinker. Just because I'm crap at it doesn't mean I'm gonna tell other people to stop. You guys absolutely crack on and do whatever makes you happy. I just wanted to make this video on the off chance that someone might be watching who has either just been on holiday or goes on holiday soon and they're a little bit worried about you know, how to cope with it and what's normal to feel and what isn't normal to feel. To be honest, it's all, it's all normal. Like however you feel will be completely normal and there'll be ways you can deal with it, I promise. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry for sweating so much this entire video and I will see you soon. May the force be with you. Is it beast on my